Hi, this is Cities Timelines and I'm Dean Webb and let's talk about winning with barges. As we rebuild our city, we need to embrace barges to help our growth and e-commerce return. When I showed my first attempt at building a riverfront, a good friend named Shukaboa looked at it and said, that's impossible and dangerous. Impossible because that big red ship inside the port really wouldn't fit in there. Dangerous because I've got petrochemical storage next to things that could spark and cause flame, like metal storage, for example. And he told me, this is not the way to go. Because Shukaboa knows so much about shipping, I said, all right, Shukaboa hath spoken. Whatever he adviseth, I shall follow. And I listened at the feet of the master as he schooled me on what to look for in rebuilding riverfront ports. The first place we looked at was Vienna, Austria. You see the major port areas are highlighted and the one that's aligned in red, well, that is where the petrochemical storage is. You don't want that next to anything else and you can see there's plenty of nothing around it. Whereas the other areas are where lots of other things get stored and well, it doesn't really matter if you put metal in its sparks next to wood or food, they don't really catch on fire quite the way the petrochemicals do. And then Shukaboa dropped some more wisdom on me. He says, Dean, how are they going to move things around on that river? With the ocean going craft they have as the default vanilla acid in city skylines? No, they're going to use barges. Barges everywhere. Why barges? Well, if we take a look back at this map of Wien, you see there's a lot of bridges going across the river. All over Europe, they've got low bridges. And if you've got a low bridge, you need a low slung boat to fit underneath that bridge. More than that though, barges are also incredibly maneuverable and they're greener than almost every other form of bulk transport, trains included. Take a look at the port of Rotterdam. Now off to the left is the ocean and the river that goes through Rotterdam is pretty darn wide, but well, it cuts off after a certain point, and where it cuts off, that's where the barges take over. Again, you notice the area outlined in red. That's the petrochemical storage, and you can see all the barge channels and ship channels carved out of the side of the river. It's pretty cool. And remember, the main transfer between different parts of the town and different parts of the country is going to be barges and I should have known this because I had a picture of all these barges in my previous video. <laughs> I should have figured that part out. We next went to New Orleans and looked at a bend of river there. You can see highlighted here on the riverside all the barges stacked up ready to deliver. You can see industrial areas also highlighted. Where are the refineries? They're off the map. They're to the left and to the right far away from anything that could spark. So this tells me when I build out my map, I need to keep my petrochemical stuff together. That is a slight modification from the plan I proposed in the previous video. The other thing is I need to move everything around with barges. How am I going to move everything with barges if the default ships in the game are those big container ships? The answer is go to the workshop. There's a barge mod. This allows the creation of ferry routes for cargo transport. That is really cool stuff. With this mod, you also need to get a barge harbor because, well, that's how it's going to work. When you get the barge harbor, you also need to get a barge pack because the barges look better with other barges. While you're at it, it's also recommended to get the extra ferry components because you can get a one-way ferry path such as depicted here. That allows for one-way movement of cargo and you can have an orderly format to your cargo transfer within your city on the barge paths. That actually makes them more controllable in the game than the railroads. 
pretty cool. Now, I'm still going to build out with the plan I had before, so don't worry, I'm not messing around too much with the plan, I just need to put all my petrochemicals in one spot, but everything else can go where they need to go, and I'll shift goods between the different industrial zones with, that's right, barges. So let's get to winning with barges. So let's take a look at how we're doing in the game with the barges. As we see, according to Shukaboa, all of this should be way far away from anything that sparks, and indeed it is. The petroleum storage is safe. Hoorah! Now let's go ahead and put things in motion here. Where do we get the petroleum from? Well, I don't have any uh, off-map cargo coming in, so I'm pretending like it's a pipeline that extends off the edge of the map. In reality, it is showing up through this cargo terminal here. The trains will come by, drop off the stuff, and replenish the petroleum area here. But I'm pretending it's a pipeline that brings it all in. So that makes me happy. Don't worry about the water, guys. It's, there's something seasonal going on here. I'll fix that later. Anywho... I also kept all of the oil producing buildings in this area here. I'll just turn them off. How about that? There we go. All the oil producing buildings in this area here. And anything that requires petroleum for a advanced industry also stays in this area. The buildings that require plastics are many and varied and they are all over the place. So the way the traffic gets from one area to another, it's by barge. And this guy's going to go take off. Let's follow our bargey fellow. All right. Do, 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 do. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. There we go. Barge, barge, barge. Where are you going to? Where are you going to, buddy? Ooh, look. There's another barge. That's right. All my ships are now barges. Some of them get stuck. I may have to unload this asset here. I keep seeing these guys getting stuck on my map. Let's delete it. Okay. There we go. But we're following this guy. Do, 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 do. Where are you going, barge fella? Are you going to the metal area? Because here we make all of our metals and glass and any industry that requires glass is in this area. So we may see a barge form up that is going to send out metal to some other area. I was thinking of having metal producing stuff in other parts of the map, but eh, I'll just keep it all together and simplify it that way. But I do have the industry still grouped by what they're using. <gasps> nope, he's not going to drop it off at the metal area. Well, is he going to go to the forestry area? The forestry area here, anything that requires, uh, I believe, the planed timber? Yeah, that's all in this area. The industries that require paper are off towards where the petroleum area are and the agricultural area. So this barge area here will send people off to go send paper products hither and hither. Oh, looks like he's coming in to drop off plastics at this area because, like I said, you need plastics everywhere. And then over here we have the farm goods area. Anything that requires flour, got the factory right here. Um, other than that, we're importing uh, both paper and uh, plastic at this area. Now, even though each barge harbor requires that you specify a product for it, that doesn't limit it at all. Any product will come and go from a harbor. It just so happens that the only good we have to export here is animal products, so I'll stockpile it there. The only good we have to export here is paper, so I'll stockpile it here. Uh, metals here, guess what gets stockpiled, and of course plastics is a big one over here. To supplement the barges, which are by the way very green and efficient, we've got rail lines that also connect each zone. So I've got a cargo station on each zone hooked up to the main rail line. Uh, well, rather a spur on the main rail line. The main rail line always goes just to the outside of this area. So if we have trains coming in from off map that need to get quickly to another zone, they don't have to go through a cargo station. They can go around it. Now, I theorize that the cargo, sorry, the industrial areas need to be laid out first because that's what's going to get rebuilt there. They're not going to rebuild industry where it wasn't. So I had to lay these out. And yes, that's why we're making some good money right now. 
because I have all the industry here. But the industry had to be there first, and then after that, I put in the rail lines. Rail lines are very important, and they would have come in probably right after the industry developed. Okay, so I've got the rail lines in, I've got the industry in. Next, I needed to have roads that would bring in the freeway traffic. So I would I tried to follow an existing road as it was and just convert it to a six lane road that would connect to the freeway later on. And if you're looking at this and going, oh my gosh, you really aren't supposed to have that many nodes, that many intersections next to each other on a major arterial road. Dude, seriously, that's bad. Yeah, it is bad. It's following the existing road pattern. This is what we got, peeps. You want to preserve historical character? Well, there you are. We follow along and... Oi, oi, oi. It's not so bad there. Oh, yikes. That looks pretty rough. And then we get down here and it's... Uh, and I think the most cursed is over here. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. So we may be doing some pruning. We may be losing some of our historical character in the name of sanity. But some of these roads that connect are going to stay connected and get widened and become arterial roads of their own or connect or distributor roads. So that's what's got to be in place. And now once I have these decisions made, I can go about putting in the rest of the city. To get the industry kicked off, I did put in some population. You, we got 18,000 people. And they are crammed into some of the worst looking housing units available. I'll talk more about this in another episode, but I'll just say when you're dealing with several hundred thousand refugees, you don't ask questions about should it look pretty. You get the cheapest materials in the most efficient way possible, stack them deep, sell them cheap, get people out from under the elements and instead under a roof. Get them hot running water, get them a place to put their food where the rats won't get it and we've got to return to civilization we're going to house a lot of people in places that look horrible but as things stabilize and as the years go by we're going to be able to build new housing that looks better this is an emergency we've got to get the stuff in there now and i see i've, I've still got a water problem i'll fix that when i get done with this but I just wanted to say the barges are what's really making the whole area come together and give it some good European flair or American riverfront flair. So I laid down each barge harbor and connect them using a ferry pathway. I don't have to have any depot spawning barges and I don't have to worry about passenger traffic. It just, boom, there they go. It just goes along that pathway. I built it to where it wouldn't collide with the major tra uh, river traffic going to and fro. They just ride kind of inside it. And Bob's your uncle. I don't know if I need to have rail connections from one spot to another. I could probably get by entirely 100% on barges. It's just that I also want these guys to be able to export to the rest of the map. So I let that happen. And they do need to import products again. It seems like the game favors rail traffic over water traffic. I might delete them. You'll also notice that I, I only wanted to have barges and rails connect these areas. Roads do not connect any industrial zone at all. No roads. I don't have them connected to the rest of the grid either. I'm going to try to think that through carefully. Because I don't want there to be a sudden rush of traffic of trucks spewing out into the rest of the world I want to take that carefully I can make this all run without any other connection and it's just fine the people teleport to work and I'm good with that for now by the way you'll also notice that out of the jobs available I've got a lot of people employed and a lot of them are highly educated that's because earlier in the game I had the Hadron Collider set up over here and that got a lot of educated people. And you go, wait, that's cheating. No, no, it's not cheating. I'm simulating an existing educated population that's getting back to work. Yeah. 
Now, I've deleted it, so I'm going to have to deal with regular education coming up. I get you there. But if you want to simulate a lot of educated people coming back to their jobs after everything has been blown up and getting rebuilt, that's the way you do it. Get the Hadron Collider. I've also used the Game Anarchy mod to turn off police, trash, and other problems. I'm going to turn those back on and then have to put in some police and fire and death services in these areas just to make sure that I'm playing the game straight. But that is the way it is here in the old city that's being saved by barges. I love them. Get them in your town and get them going. Get them cooking. I hope you've enjoyed winning with barges. I hope you enjoy the idea of putting your industry together in such a way that it's run efficiently and spread out all over a waterfront because that's what waterfronts are really for, not parks. They're there for commerce and industry. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll fix that later. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy the history. I hope you enjoy the concepts. And feel free to like, to comment, to subscribe, and get into it with me here on Cities Timelines. Thanks very much and have a great day.